So today we are looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3. As we know, this is a pastoral epistle, so a letter written to Timothy, who is now pastor um, in Ephesus. And the Apostle Paul, he is in prison. He may be executed, so he's waiting for that. And uh, he gives some very important lessons and guidelines and warnings uh, to, to Timothy. So we are looking at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 9 today. So in chapter 2, at the end of the chapter 2, uh, the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy how to treat those people who uh, got confused. He says, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. And when we listen to progressive Christianity, to new age ideas uh, that infiltrate Christian churches everywhere in our days, we can see how people really are captured by the devil, uh, you know, like through confusion and deception and false ideas. So what we need to do, we need to correct our opponents uh, with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. And again, so for, for people who uh, profess uh, progressive Christianity, New Age, uh, they themselves are uh, the truth, or there is no truth for them, right? So they reject Jesus as, as the only objective truth. So that is why we should correct the opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, which is, which is Jesus and the word of God, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. And now, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. So uh, we see that on the one hand, uh, there are people who are deceived by the devil, uh, who are confused, uh, who don't have uh, the knowledge of the truth, they don't know Jesus, they don't obey Jesus, they don't know the word of God, they don't obey the word of God. And of course, pastors and church leaders, and we Christians, we are all called to, uh, to be patient and, and to feel, um, not to be immediately angry and hate those people, but, but to pray for them and try to teach them, maybe God will through repentance, grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. And they may come, as, as the Apostle Paul says, to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil. But also, this is one scenario, but, but, but there are also people from whom we just should, uh, whom we should just avoid, right? So, uh, and, uh, and uh, the Apostle Paul says, avoid si such people in verse 5. And he gives us a list of those people, right, whom we shall avoid. 
So let us go um, back to our uh, passage and analyze it verse after verse. But understand this, that in the last days, and the last days is the time between the ascension of Jesus and the second coming. So basically, 2,000 years, right? So it's the last times, right? And, the, and, and of course, uh, we are closer to the last times, to the second coming of Jesus, than people who lived before us, right? So, but the last time, days, it's also our days. There will come times of difficulty. And difficulty, uh, here it means like very intense difficulty, a lot of problems a lot of tensions. But please pay attention that the Apostle Paul is not ta talking about uh, calamities, he's not talking about earthquakes or droughts, he's talking about people. And then he says what kind of problems we'll have. For people will be lovers of self. And this is like the root of all the other problems, the lovers of self. When we look at progressive Christianity, uh, uh, new age philosophy, the idea which is very popular today, you are enough, you are perfect, you are goddess, uh, follow your heart, uh, listen to what you feel inside of you. Some of them would even uh, say whatever you feel inside is God, you are God, you know. So basically some of them would say I am competing with with the God of the Bible, right? So that whatever they feel inside, you know, and then they will feel something, oh, I should marry, you know, a woman would feel that she should marry a woman, you know, and then, you know, it will go against, uh, against the Bible, against the word of God, against the objective truth. But all that stems from this problem that people will be lover, lovers of self. So they love themselves, they are their own gods. And then uh, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive. So proud and arrogant, again, so uh, put yourself first. Just look at all the, uh, all the advertisement slogans, just do it. Uh, no limitations, no boundaries. Just, you know, untame yourself, you know, all those things, right? So. Uh, Proud, arrogant, lovers of self, abusive. Uh, we see that, unfortunately, uh, this, is, uh, this is what happens around us. Disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, uh, which means opposing God and everything that comes from God. Heartless, and heartless means uh, not really having any uh, affection. So uh, the, the word that is used here is about family love love within family, when people don't actually love one another, don't care. Uh, unpeaceable, slanderous. We, we can see how easily people today slander one another. Uh, you think about, like the most visible to me, uh, this cancel culture. Uh, if uh, somebody doesn't agree with you, so the idea is to destroy their reputation, their business, to destroy them completely, cancel culture. So, and then uh, it could be slanderous, it could be lies, it could be like all kind of evil, you know. This is what we see in po politics. I mean, it's always existed, right? But it's kind of like growing, I believe. Uh, without self-control, uh, without self-control. You know, self-control is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, by the way, in Galatians. So, people who do not have self-control, they just want to follow their desires. I want this, I want that. Uh, sexual desires, uh, uh, material desires, you know, emotional desires. Just, you know, th th there is no control, there is no boundary, there is no uh, self-control, right? So, and we can see that growing nowadays as well. Brutal not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This is also uh, very popular today. What gives you ple pleasure? Fulfilling life, uh, something that, uh, you know, I deserve this, you know, I want to enjoy, I want to receive as much pleasure as possible. So I don't care about God and commandments and God design. 
lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. So you may think that the list of all those characteristics is about people who do not believe in Jesus, right? But the last phrase, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, so it shows uh, it's about Christians as well. So unfortunately, uh, Christians can be carried away you know, by false teachings. Uh, so that, that is why, by the way, <laughs> the Apostle Paul in his, uh, in Ephesians, he says that God gives pastors and apostles and teachers to the church so that we may not be carried away, you know, so that the true teaching uh, is proclaimed and taught, but then the problem is when pastors are carried away. So that is, that is a big problem. Then they just... The phrase, the having the appearance of godliness, oh, I'm a Christian, I love God, or I love the Bible, but denying its power, so denying its power to tell you what to do, denying its power to transform you, right? So, uh, on the one hand, they still call themselves Christians. On the other hand, they reject everything the Bible teaches. Okay, if we talk about progressive Christianity, for example. So, avoid such people. So we know that uh, such people will be like this, but since the Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy or telling him to avoid such people, so that means that uh, already Timothy saw this problem, right? And that this problem has existed over the centuries. And, and, and today, because I believe because of the internet and it, it looks like the second coming is near, so it kind of gets much, much worse, right? Mm. For among them are those who creep into households and capture women. So women didn't work mm. back then. They would stay at home and they would have a lot of free time. And sometimes you would have widows. And uh, yeah, those false teachers, they would just confuse all those women. Uh, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. Again, we see here the Apostle Paul touches upon the false teachings. Uh, women that are always learning uh, that are interesting in all the new concepts, ideas, and philosophies, right? Oh, okay, he, you know, this new book was published. Oh, you know, this new movie came out. Always learning, always trying to learn something new, and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth, which is Jesus, right? Just as Janus and Jambers opposed Moses, and these are the names uh, of the magicians, who opposed Moses in Egypt, right? With all the uh, demonic miracles. So these men also opposed the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. We do not have much access to the internet, right? I mean, we have, but we are not that popular. We can see that a lot of false teachers, they have a big following, uh, they publish books, they're popular, right? So they are uh, visible. So, but there are good pastors who are also visible, but are not that popular. But I believe that we uh, Christians need to go to the Bible. We need to know the truth. We need to know what the Jesus teaches so that we may not be confused. Uh, this is what we were talking about today. May God bless you.